Thank you for joining us for Focus on the Bible with Dr. Freddie Coyle. Freddie is the president of Focus Evangelistic Ministries, based in Danielsville, Georgia. Here he is now. Coronavirus has reminded us all of the fear we have of the unknown. We returned home from Texas a few weeks ago, and I didn't see a roll of toilet paper on the shelves of our store for weeks and weeks. I'm thankful that a friend came by, an anonymous friend came by and put a whole jumbo pack in the trees for us on the lane out front that we were able to have that saw us through the crisis. What was that disappearing toilet paper? Well, it's just psychology, that's all. It was predictable that when people are faced with an unknown fear, something that seems larger than life to them, they go and do what they can, even if the thing they do is inconsequential and really matters not in the fight against the great big monster that's so uncertain, but they still go and do what they can, and that was what was with all the disappearing toilet paper. Uncertainty is an awful thing. It takes away our sleep at night, it makes our food taste bland, it increases the heart rate, makes the blood pressure go up, and leaves us with thoughts that are not good for our health. Uncertainty is the opposite of assurance. Let's talk about this today. When I was 15 years old, I went and tried out for my high school baseball team. Fifteen is a little young to make that varsity team, but I had a drive inside me and my heart was to play. And so out I went with a lot of boys. There must have been 60 or 70 boys out there for those three days of tryouts. There was a lot of energy, a lot of nervousness, and we did our best at things like uh, going up against that pitching machine to try and do all we could with the 10 pitches we got. We fielded ground balls. They ch tested our arm and our foot speed to first base and from first base to third base. And each day of the three days, we would go into the high school main lobby and there posted against the glass walls of the library would be the remaining number of names that were still involved with that tryout. On the third morning then, it would be posted the final roll call of who had made the baseball varsity team. Each morning, we all went to that board. Everyone humbled himself, hat in hand, and stood at that board knowing full well our name might have been cut. I'll never forget my friend Don. I was just a sophomore. Don was a senior. He was probably two or three times bigger than I was. Don was a big, strong country boy. He'd never played organized baseball before, and Don and I rode home from the practices each day, and Don had as much uncertainty as I did. Even though on that second day, Don had hit three balls up into the pine trees beyond that outfield fence, three out of ten pitches, but Don went to bed that night knowing full well his name could be cut at any time. I was thankful that on day three, Don and I had made the varsity. But those days were miserable. Those nights were long. Every morning having to go in wondering, how do I face my friends? How will the school look at me knowing that I wasn't good enough to play on that team? Uncertainty. It's an awful thing. I want to tell you, friend, that in this life, especially in these dark days of this crisis that no one seems to really understand, these days of uncertainty and fear of the unknown, assurance is what we need. And the bottom line of assurance is this, friend. The only certain thing we have in this life is God. His word tells us that God is unfailable. He's faithful. He's just. God sends the sun up right on time every day. He sends it down in the evening. God is in charge of our spinning planet and the axis we hold that's tilted at 23 degrees. 23 degrees that gives us the four seasons that we enjoy. If something were to ever happen to that tilt, we'd all die. 23 degrees. On that axis that really doesn't even exist, there's no axis. We talk about an axis, but 
The only axis we have is one that we imagine must be in place to spend this big old planet every day faithfully. God does his job. But in the same way, if God ever failed, where on earth would we be? The Bible says that his faithfulness never, ever ends. And the Bible says that the grass and the flower fades, but the word of God, what? Will abide forever. And so, friend, in these days, whether it's coronavirus or some other fear that we have, the only certainty that we could rest our faith is God himself and what he says in the Bible. Now, let me ask you a question. When it comes to not temporary things like coronavirus or whether we're good enough to make the team or to get a job or a promotion, but when it comes to the eternal, how about you? What kind of certainty do you have? Do you have any assurance at all that all your sins are forgiven? You see, this is much more important even to the monster that's in front of us all every day, the coronavirus, because this question about my sins becomes an eternal question. Am I forgiven of all my sins or is there something that stands between me and God? You see, God, in his faithful word that abides forever, told us that we're all headed for a place and a time. A time that each one of us will stand before God, that we'll all be judged whether we are good enough to make the team or not. And the thing that this all comes down to is forgiveness. Do I have full forgiveness of all my sin that I can have everlasting life with God. I want to invite your attention to the Bible. If you have one, you could follow right along with me, but I have mine. If a Bible's not handy or you're driving down the road or something keeps your hands busy, that's okay. You can follow along with me, but I want to direct your attention to what the Bible says in Acts chapter 13 and verse 38 and 39. Acts chapter 13 now In verse 38 and 39, these words come to us from the Apostle Paul. He's gone to a place called Antioch, and he's preached the gospel to them, the good news about forgiveness. He's told them about Jesus Christ, this area that today would be somewhere in the borders, within the borders of a country called Turkey. And on this night, Paul's opening night in that region, He's told them all about Jesus Christ, that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the one who's come into our world, that Jesus has taken our sin. And Paul taught them about the resurrection, this documented event in human history now that so much has been written of. But those those people found out about it that night, that Jesus had died on the crucifix, that Jesus had risen three days later from the dead. And now Paul, to them, connects their forgiveness to the action of Jesus Christ. Here's what he's done. Verse 38 and 39, as he closes this message of opening night, he says this, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him... All that believe are justified from all things from which you could not be justified by the law of Moses. So friend, my forgiveness, your forgiveness, all hinges on this one man. This is how certain we could be. Now if it depended on two men or three or eight or ten or a church or a group of men, some governmental body of people, some board that oversees our lives, then we might have more reason to doubt. But this all comes down to Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, God who knows all things, is the man that our forgiveness hinges upon. It's all about Jesus Christ. That's the reason Paul sounded very confident, didn't he? This is not a thing to be questioned. This is not uncertainty at all. This is about assurance. This is the certainty that those who rest their faith in Jesus Christ, this one man, will have forgiveness of sins. Most people that I talk to, 
They look at themselves to ask about their forgiveness. They wonder, what is it that I have done to deserve forgiveness? A lot of people cast their eyes toward religious acts that they have done to see whether or not they have forgiveness of God. You might not believe how many people I talk to who think that God has a big scale and the way it works is that whenever you die, you go and stand before God and God puts all the bad things that you've done on one side of the scale and all the good things you've done on the other side and there's a moment then of uncertainty but then the scale balances and if you did more good than you did bad, you could go in with God. But if your bad outweighs the good, you'll go to hell. And friend, this is never found in the pages of the Bible. That's not the message Paul was preaching tonight. He didn't bring up their sins and told, tell them that they could balance their sin out by doing good things. And there's no mention at all here of any good thing at all. What there is mention of is faith alone in Christ alone. You see, the good news for all of us is that when Jesus Christ died on the cross, we were in his mind. Our sin was what he came to deal with. The sin that stood between each of us and God Almighty. We own it. At least we're wise if we do. Our sin is a barrier between us and God. We could never get to God, not even with one sin that stands in the record that provides our guilty verdict with God. But all our sin, thank God, all of it rested on Jesus Christ on that day after no doubt a sleepless night and a morning that saw him falsely condemned and they gave him the Roman scourge and then dropped that crossbeam on his back and pointed to the top of a hill about 650 yards away. And Jesus Christ walked that narrow way to that cross bearing the weight of your sin and mine. All of it. Little sins, big sins, secret sins you wouldn't want anyone to know about. Jesus Christ took the worst sin that you've ever done. Bore the full weight of it on his shoulders alone. And died that day on top of that hill called Golgotha. And when he died, your payment and mine were made. Three days later... He raised from the dead. Jesus Christ, who went into that grave wearing our sin, came out alive three days later, and our sin barrier had been removed. John the Baptist said this of Jesus Christ, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. John chapter 1 and verse 29. And so Paul and John and Peter and all the ones who knew Jesus Christ was the Lord of creation who would come to be the Savior of the world. All were in agreement on what we can be certain of. And that is our certainty is that Jesus died for our sin. Three days later he proved the payment was good, that it satisfied holy God over the penalty that we owe him. And that all who believe in him have full forgiveness and everlasting life. You see, friend, when we have forgiveness by faith in Jesus Christ, there's nothing left to condemn us with, with God. All our sin was paid. There's nothing condemnable about my life before the eyes of God. And I have everlasting life. I'm not sure of what might happen to me today. I'm not sure of all the effects of coronavirus in my life and yours. But though I may not be certain of coronavirus, I'm certain of this. Friend, if never before, if you'll rest your faith in Jesus Christ, God will give you a gift today, an unspeakable gift. It's everlasting life. It'll be yours in the moment in which we believe. That's what we learn when we focus on the Bible. We hope you enjoyed this message from Dr. Freddie Coyle. You can find out more about our ministries at www.freddiecoyle.org. That's F-R-E-D-D-I-E-C-O-I-L-E dot O-R-G. If you'd like to send a donation to support this outreach ministry or to reach Freddie with a question or scheduling request, please write to Focus P.O. Box 498, Danielsville, Georgia, 30633. We appreciate your support of this radio ministry and hope you'll join us again for Focus on the Bible.